You are listening to the Forcecom Frontline, bringing you to our soldiers on the front lines of readiness. Hey everyone, welcome to the Forcecom Frontline. I'm Ashley and I'm your host. And today we are talking with our Forcecom Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Todd Sims, who is on the brink of retirement after more than 35 years of service to the nation. Sergeant Major Sims has been the Forcecom Command Sergeant Major since July of 2020. And as a senior enlisted soldier in Forces Command, the Command Sergeant Major advises the Commanding General on all matters regarding Forcecom soldiers. Since he entered the service in 1988, Sergeant Major Sims has served in the Marine Corps and has been assigned to a number of Forcecom units to include the 101st Airborne Division, 1st Infantry Division, 4th Infantry Division, the National Training Center, and 1st Army. And he also served with the 2nd Infantry Division and the 25th Infantry Division. He has spent a lot of time being a Forcecom soldier and supporting Forcecom soldiers. So thank you for being here, Sergeant Major. Yeah, thank you. Good morning. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. I, I think I was telling Dean before we started, I think that you have been on the podcast more than any other guest. I think this is probably your fourth time now, and I'm the only other one that's been on that many times. So yeah. <laughs> thanks for doing this so many times um, and, and being willing to talk with us. Yeah. Too easy. So just to start... Do you come from, did you come from a military family? I mean, you, you started in the Marine Corps. Um, well, actually, somebody told me it was Guard, Marine Corps, then Army. So you, you've, you Marine and Army. Um, but what led you to really want to serve and enlist? Well, it's it's funny, uh, playing Army when you're a kid. Um, <laughs> and just uh, the willingness to do something that, uh, I'm first generation back in the Army. Okay. Uh, so my granddad's brother, was in the Navy during World War II. Uh, my granddad was actually a police officer okay. in, in Washington, D.C. So, oh, wow. of course, because he didn't get his draft number card because he was actually a police officer yeah. in Washington, D.C. Uh, so neither neither one, uh, my dad didn't serve, but uh, he always talked about service. And then, you know, talking to my granddad, you know, and sp- I spent a lot of time with him in the summer, and he, he always talked about, you know, his service as a police officer. But then, you know, of all his friends that served in the Army, the Marine Corps, and all that stuff during uh, World War II. And it's something that always appealed to me. And, uh, you know, people say I got a little bit confused. <laughs> I, I, went, I joined the Guard first. I, I saw, you know, college money. I'm going to yeah. go to college. I get a $2,000 bonus. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, I did one class, and, and I really didn't enjoy what I was doing. <laughs> and then, it, long story, but my, my grandmother passed away. My mom moved from Florida to uh back to Kentucky and I was like well I really don't want to go to Kentucky this is a one stop light town like yeah uh-huh. so I moved I moved up to Virginia with my dad and uh I had big plans I'm gonna you know, hit college here I come and uh you know I didn't do that I, I went uh I was like I want to I want to go active duty um so I went down to the recruiting station and uh the army said the only place I could go was Korea I'm like eh, I don't know if I want to go to Korea but I was walking out of the, the recruiting station you know pondering and I looked in the Marine Corps and Craig, the, I know I know this guy because I just hang out with him on the beach. Oh, and I walked in. I said, like, "You take your prior service?" He's like, "Yeah." And this gunny walks around. Are you sure you got what it takes to be a yeah. so, man? Rogers, that sign me up. Let's go. <laughs> uh, so four years, and then uh, during the Clinton drawdown, I came back in the army. And I always tell people, you know, you know, I met my wife out there. I had my you know my first child. I, I'll never forget my time in Marine Corps. I have a lot of uh, good friends that st- I still keep in contact sure. with this day. Uh, but once I joined the Army, like I said, I never looked back. Um, I, yeah. Very, very happy with the opportunity that the Army's given me for the, the past 35 years, or p- past 30 years, really. Um, I never in a million years thought I'd be the Force Comp Star Major, and yet here I am. So throughout our careers, we're often influenced by key individuals um, whose paths we come across. And I I feel like we often talk about, you know, the army's really, really small. When you think about it, we often cross paths with people multiple times, but looking back on your 35 years of military service, uh, is there an individual that stands out that really made a positive impact on you? So I got a couple really. So thinking about, uh, you know, my time in the Marine Corps was a gunnery sergeant Bagwell and first sergeant Suanoa. Um, first Sergeant Sue knows is this large human, like <laughs> big, big guy, and you don't want to cross paths with a uh, first Sergeant. But uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, a bunch of us went out, and, you know, we, we did some partying, but he pulled me in the office and he kind of like, hey, stop what you're doing. You're a good Marine. I want you to, I want you to go on a path to make Sergeant. 
So you stop hanging out with these guys, you know, kind of scared me straight, yeah. you know. But then Gunnery Sergeant Bagwell was our, our platoon sergeant, and uh, that guy was full of life. And uh, his big thing he always talked about, because w- I've been in the unit for two years, and, and he always talked about don't screw over the new soldiers or the new Marines. So it was always about taking care of the people coming behind yeah. you. And then fast forward in, into the Army, because uh, I had a 27-day break. So I still oh. I still spoke you know Marine Corps sure uh, all the slang and all the stuff and uh, were you so, still eating the crayon? Yes, I was, <laughs> and I had a jarhead too. Um, but you know, thinking about uh, uh, First Sergeant Dwayne Sumas, what what a great example as as a young soldier to look up to to a First Sergeant that show was emp- empathetic, caring. Knew, knew his job, knew our jobs, and and knew how to deal with people, and he could you know tailor that to anything and great greatest thing about Dwayne uh he uh he's retired retired now but he was at he was at uh in and out processing center at Fort Campbell when I came in as a division sergeant major and I saw his name on the wall so I waited in the parking lot till he showed up he goes oh my gosh <laughs> uh, but he then went and worked for the uh so- soldiers for life the SFL tap center there on Fort Campbell he's retired retired now but just uh just three three people that I can think of right off the, the top of my head that you know really had an influence on how how I operate and it, yeah. it's interesting that you say that because as I'm listening to you talk about these three individuals everything that they instilled in you when you first came in I feel like you have carried on with you throughout your career um so they they clearly did leave their impact um and it's great to hear that the um one guy at Fort Campbell was still you know giving back to soldiers yep. even after retirement um so you initially looked at the re- the guard college money, which I think a lot of people probably do the same thing. Um, but what would you say to somebody today who, who is contemplating military service as an option after high school? Uh, it's, I think, uh, you know, it, it makes a difference in your life. It teaches you discipline. It teaches you like, this is the first time you're, you're out on your, on your own. So you have to manage your finances. Uh, you, you know, you have to actually start paying bills. Right. Uh, but, the people you connect with and uh and the things that you get to do uh you know get to go to fancy locations uh get to right. travel uh things that you know if you're just just out of high school it's a perfect way to start your life and it doesn't matter if you do you know a two-year enlistment or four-year enlistment it it teaches you discipline it teaches you hey it's important to get up in the morning and actually do physical training for the benefit of the health yeah. of your health um but then it gives you a path, something to do, something to focus on. And in, in the career skills, you know, there's so many options. Uh, you can, you know, get a skill that you're going to have that you can take back out. You know, right. being an infantry guy for 35 years, it's like I could be a cop or, or do whatever. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the Army gives you money to go to college as well. Right. So that's like, you know, you can knock a class out and one, one at a time. That's exactly what I did until I earned my degree. But there's so many opportunities to in service that I – Army in particular, because we have, we have we're so large and right. we have a bunch of different MOSs. But I, I think to encourage uh, young folks to do that, it, it it's going to set a foundation for the rest of their life. Absolutely. So you were talking about experiences, and this is a big question. But when you look back, is there an experience that you've had in the Army that you know is still something that is at the top of your your career? Well, it, it's really you know. An experience is when my daughter enlisted and came in the Army. Oh. When I went to her basic training graduation. I think uh, I was a star major. It was a proud, proud dad moment <sighs> to, to see my daughter march on that uh, field bet. at Fort Jackson and, and become a soldier. Um, you know, <laughs> when she enlisted, she was 18. You know, I, I, I was still thinking dad mode. So I, I went down to the recruiting station. <laughs> I had every one of those recruiters at Parade Rest. What are you thinking? <laughs> it's like, Sergeant Major, she's 18. I'm like, do uh, <laughs> But, you know, as uh, there's lots of moments, but that sticks out uh, special for me because, you know, it, my, my daughter decided to serve and she, yeah. she served. So that was pretty cool. I didn't realize that your daughter had. Is she still in? No, no. Oh, OK. I didn't realize that she had served at all. So that's that's cool that that legacy continued. Um, so based on your own experiences, what sort of advice would you give to somebody who recently joined the Army? Sort of like the advice that you got right when you came in? Uh <laughs> So follow orders, number one. <laughs> be on time when, where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, and be in the right uniform. Um, and that's simple, 
simple advice, but it, it works yeah. because it, if you're doing that, you're actually building that habit, that thing sure. that to make you better. And then uh, take uh, take the advice of uh, you know do do things that you're not comfortable with, like airborne school, air assault school, go to ranger school. All those little things that are going to make you a better better small unit leader. It's going to help you stand out. As you start your career, um, don't be afraid to volunteer. Um, yeah. And you know the biggest one is recognizing you volunteered, and it's a, it's a great school to teach you small unit tactics. And it's uh, it's something you know any M- MOS can do. Uh, look at First Sergeant Simmons. Look at Staff Sergeant yeah. Jimenez. Uh, 88 Mike's and a 14. Anybody can do it. It just makes you a, a better leader in the long run. But uh, <laughs> it, it's cliche, right? Be in the right uniform, be on time, <laughs> and do what you're told. Um, but yeah. it, it's pr- pretty simple at the beginning. But then I'd say at the beginning you're doing that, but then start doing things that you're not comfortable with, you know, like a, a volunteer to go to urban school, yeah. et cetera, and so forth. You know, my dad was in the Army Guard Reserve for 30-some-odd years, and I cannot be somewhere. I have to be 15 minutes early wherever I go. Like, <laughs> he instilled that in me from a very young age, and I just can't break it. So yeah. I'm always sitting in the parking lot 15 minutes early. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I totally get that. So, you know, looking back, what are you most proud of? That's, you know, most, I'm most proud of uh, those, those people that have worked for me that still keep in contact with me. Uh, but – they were young NCOs and soldiers for me. Now they're star majors. Uh, so I, I think uh, the things that I instilled in them when I was their leader, it, it's it's so awesome and humbling to watch some of the things they took from me and they're they're doing inside of their formations. Yeah. I was just down at a JRTC uh, last week and uh, Command Star Major Rob Absher, uh, the two two Ramrod Star Major, he was a Sergeant E five for me, and to watch him out there. He was actually maneuvering with his soldiers. I, I, I donned the, the black, mm-hmm. uh, black or the, the dark uniform of uh, Geronimo, and we attacked it. We purposely attacked, <laughs> but we attacked his uh, his his battalion, and uh, it, it was amazing to see the command he had over his uh, his soldiers maneuvering and putting people in position to, to fight off. But you know, just a phenomenal leader. There's so many of them. Uh, you know, I think it's our Major Gill, Herb Gill. He's getting ready to, uh, to take over one of the SFABs. Um, he was a, a sergeant for me in my formation. Uh, but it's it's so aw- so awesome just to, to see those folks that uh, who worked for me. I promoted uh, Sergeant Major uh, DeLeon to Sergeant E5 in Samara, Iraq. He is now a battalion Sergeant Major too. Wow. So it's uh, you know it's it's humbling. Uh, but I think the I. D- I feel like I've left a positive impact on on soldiers, and 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 I, I got to, I, it's humbling to see it come to fruition. I'm sure. And you know, speaking of working with soldiers, you were just down at the best squad competition last week. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, your interactions with the soldiers that you saw there? Um, I know it was a, a big competition, yeah. and our scent I think took the. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it they, is. they won fair and square. I heard that they knocked it out of the park. Yeah. So it was it was really tight. So it was between Arsent 101st and uh, and JRTC, mm-hmm. and they, like two points, four points. Wow. It came down to the foot march actually. And uh, so like this one interaction I had was with uh, actually one of the Arsent soldiers. I I ran out. Uh, they had already taken off, so I ran out to the four mile point and I turned around and I came back with the leader. And we just talked about, you know, he's from Idaho. We, we talked about, you know, what, what he does when, he, you know, he's not in the guard. Uh, but it, it, sh- it was so so awesome just to spend time with him. But I, I got to talk to all of them before the competition started. Uh, but then throughout each event, I would pick a squad just to go hang out with mm-hmm. and spend time with and, and get to oh, cool. get to talk with them. Um, so it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, people – you know, you heard my speech. I talked about sol- soldiers these days. I said they're amazing. You know, you know, you got to go down and actually see what they're doing yeah. to, to know that hey, we have a great army and it's full of uh, great young soldiers and, and great young leaders yeah. who, uh, who they all volunteered to do that and they w- all went out there and they gave 110 um, percent. And it, it was it was an amazing event. And <laughs> Fort Campbell did an outstanding job setting it up. Second Brigade, the Strike Brigade, it, it was perfectly run. And it, each leader 
yeah. took time to make sure that each event was going to be uh, awesome, if, yeah. if you will. But those soldiers and those uh, NCOs down there, that's that's the reason I can sleep good at night. <laughs> when I retire, I know this Army is in great hands because of people like that. I don't know how y'all were talking when he did that ruck march in like what two minutes and twenty or two hours and twenty something minutes. Two hours twenty one. That's insane. What is that like a less than ten minute? Yeah, that's it. it, it he was going good, I, <laughs> but I did tell him when we were running. So when I did the air assault foot march back in nineteen ninety three, <laughs> I did it in two hours and five minutes. Wow. So I, I ran the whole thing, but uh, that, that for. That that was the last event of of our over eight days of yeah. of walking, running, uh, doing uh, the ACFT. I mean, doing all the events they did. Right. But to be able to put it together at the end like that, that that's <laughs> phenomenal. I don't. I think if I had a rucksack on, it would have been. It had probably been. I'd have been lucky to come in in three hours. <laughs> but that was amazing. And yeah, it, absolutely. You know, let him do a shout out. I think that made his day. Yeah, that I I'm looking forward. I'm hopefully going to talk to them here shortly, yeah. um, and do a podcast with them. And that's one of my. One of the things I'm going to talk to him about is how, you know, you can go out there after what, like what you just said, eight days of physical competition and then continue to still give your all in this last event. But so what I mean, we talk about 35 years of service. So throughout your time in the Army Marines, um, what are some of the biggest impacts that you have seen that have had a positive impact on the force? Um. The biggest one right now is uh, uh, H2F, Holistic Health and Fitness. Love that That's, program. It's phenomenal. Um, I've, I've got to spend time with the folks here at Fort Bragg, all the way out to First Court, JBLM. You know, everywhere that we have those teams set up, watching what those specialty niche people yeah. that they have in those teams and what they're doing to transform formations. So the ACFT, um, I think one of the biggest benefits is it – it's it's not push-ups, <laughs> sit-ups, and a two-mile run. It's actually testing your fitness. Sure. And and it's changed the culture uh, of our army. And, and I think that's probably about the most amazing thing that's uh, it's happened. And you know we're finally starting to modernize. So uh, the whole 35 years I've been in, we've had the same stuff. Um, and you know just I, I still a line from the the former chief is uh you know if we don't modernize, we're going to face irrelevance. Um, so I think seeing the new weapon systems that are coming online, it's, uh, I, I, w- I hate that it's at, at, at the end of my tenure because I really like the, the, that new, uh, <laughs> uh, new squad weapon. And uh, it, it's, it's amazing stuff that we're doing uh, to, to make our soldiers more lethal. Um, and seeing that 3rd ID having, you know, the newest tank, the newest right. Bradleys, amp fees, all those things are, are going to make a difference for, you know, when – the nation calls on us again to uh, close with and destroy the enemy. But I, I think for that, that, the biggest impact has actually been at, toward the end of my career. You know, there's been a lot of great initiatives and things that have, sure. have come. But, you know, watching this come to fruition at the end, knowing, like I said, kids these days, they're awesome. <laughs> and they're going to take all this new equipment and get very good with it. And, yeah. then, you know, if we get called on, they're going to go crush Crush the enemy. <laughs> so, you know, you talked about H2F, and I have talked to a ton of people on the podcast about H2F. I think it's an amazing program. And I've had soldiers that have come on and talked about how they lost somebody to suicide, and they have utilized H2F to help them bounce back from whatever they were going through following that suicide. Or they've had a really bad injury, and it's because of H2F that they didn't have to get out of the Army. They were able to stay in and continue their career. So it is – an amazing program and I'm glad that in everybody that I've talked to literally every soldier I've talked to has said this is a great program so I'm excited to see where it goes as we continue but so you know a lot of great things have happened but there's still there's always work to be done what do you hope to see in the future for our, our soldiers um so I, I really uh after having the ability to travel to every camp post and station that the forces command has um so i'm really looking forward to the future is uh where we align units with uh where they live their barracks uh you know we, there's a lot of work we still got to do with that um then the infrastructure of our installations um i, I know mcom's looking at it real hard i know forces command's looking at it real hard. so so is the department of army yeah but we have to upgrade the facilities where our soldiers work um it, 
I know it's going to come, but that the things that I look forward to is when, when, you know, I had the same motor pool in the 101st in 1993. It's still there. <laughs> same building but then i think of fort hood they, they have the most modern tank in the army as well and they can't even work on it inside the building they have to work on it on a, in a, underneath an awning at the back side of the motor pool oh, wow. uh, so i'm looking forward to the how we how the collective as the department of army forces command and mcom and amc tackle that and yeah. build a better infrastructure for our camps posts and stations that's that's long term. Sure. But, you know, I'll, I'll be happy one day to go walk, walk on an installation <laughs> and, and see something that's like, this is awesome. <laughs> and we know we're taking care of our soldiers. Absolutely. So you talked about this a little bit before, but you're transitioning out of the Army as the top enlisted soldier in Force Gum. Is this something that did you ever think that you would make it this far? Thirty five years is was this something you had ever contemplated? No, I, <laughs> I jokingly always uh, I, I just wanted to be a first sergeant. And I got to do that, in, you know, two times in combat in in in, in garrison. Um, and it pinched me. I, I thought I was done, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, and they told me I made the list. I'm like, what list are you talking about? Well, the, the school list to go to Sergeant Major Academy. I said, like, okay. Um, then it's kind of frustrated because um, I graduated the academy and I was, and I was an op sergeant major. I was an op sergeant major for 26 months, and this was pre CSL. Then uh, Command Sergeant Major Frank Grippy, Big Frank, punched me in the chest and said, you're taking the battalion next week. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, doing that, uh, then getting CSL selected for another battalion and then two brigades, NTC. You know, I'm, I'm at that point, I'm telling, you know, we bought a house in Washington State. Um, and then, you know, my wife's like, yeah, we got this house, you know, we're going we're gonna to retire and everything. So, yeah, I'm going to retire. But, you know, the opportunity kept coming, you know, especially when I interviewed and got hired for the 101st. I mean, okay. Uh, yeah. And then, then I went to the retirement seminar when I was in the 101st because <laughs> I thought I was retiring. And it was so funny. The SMA Daily was the SMA at the time, but he was at the same class with me. And he's like, Sims, why are you here? <sighs> I was like, because you told me to be here. Because you have to prepare, you know, one, yeah. year, one year out or two years. It, whenever the, the cycle is, we can get to go to the class. And that next week I got hired for First Army. And I'm like, wow. Then about 15 months into that job, I start thinking transition again. And then uh, this opportunity, uh, General Garrett gave me a call, interviewed, and then called me back a couple of days later. Now I'm, now I'm the force comm sergeant major. Yeah. So it, it's really all about timing, and it's about, you know, it's about do you have a connection with the GO? I mean, it's just it's been awestruck because you know, <laughs> I, I thought it, it, as, a, as a battalion operations sergeant major, I was at that point where I, I said, I think I'm going to retire. And then, you know, it took it took big Frank Grippy to punch me and it, you know give me a little sock on the chest say hey you're taking that battalion. <laughs> it, it kind of motivated me to keep going. How was that for your your family? I mean uh, we talk a lot about soldier readiness, yeah. but families are a huge part of our readiness. So how was that? I think uh, at that point you know Sean was a little bit younger. Shelby had graduated high school and then of course she joined the army. Um, but you know all the moving aside it's uh i think the discussions uh, between uh, myself and my wife was like you know if you want to keep doing this I i'm willing to follow you wherever you want to go and she says you're going to go all the way to the top if you're going to continue <laughs> to do this and uh you know i think force comms is a great uh great way to end a, a great career yeah uh, but it's uh it, the impacts on the family i think uh since the kids are a little bit older you know th th it was more of impact during during combat so all those deployments, back back and forth deployments, that was that was rougher because they don't know is dad gonna come home. Sure. And then it, <laughs> I came back from a I came back from Iraq to go to the academy, and uh, my son it was I came back on his birthday, so we didn't tell him I was coming back, and uh, so I had a friend pick me up and it took me to the house, and uh, I knocked on the door, and she's like, Sean, go get the door, and he actually oh. opened the door and he looked at me, and he turned around and looked at his mom, is he really here? <laughs> Is he going back? Oh my gosh! Uh, so yeah, that's uh, those were the hardest times. But I think once I started on the on the, the train of, of of command sergeant major, you know, they they backed me. My my son graduated high school for, from at Fort Carson, so then he went straight off to college. So I think uh, you know, it, it, is it rough? Yes, it's rough. But I, I think uh, that the support that my wife gave me is second to none. And you'll get to see me cry on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but um, next Friday. But uh, I think uh, if it wasn't for her in, in my corner and like, so, you know, I will follow you anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's just been a phenomenal 
Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. What, what? So I'm I'm sort of in this not same situation, but I have young kids. Um, my husband's in the military. We haven't had to do a move yet with our kids in school, yeah. and it's inevitable. I know that. Um, what sort of advice would you give to families about you know preparing their children to to go through this as a as a army brat? Yeah. So. <laughs> everybody would say suck it up and drive on well, you have to <laughs> you have to really uh, communicate with uh with kid your kids and, and talk to them about th- this is this is dad's job this yeah. is what dad does he's supporting our our nation and uh you know it, it's it's hard i mean ki- kids are i mean military kids are tough yeah and, and i think uh i won't use the resilient word they're tough uh, <laughs> because you know when you ask a person every three years to uproot and go somewhere um, it, it's going to be hard on that, those children. And if you don't have a relationship where you, where, where you can talk with your kids about this, yeah. you know, when they're real little, then they really don't know. But as they start, you know, getting into those teenage oh, yeah. years, and especially when they're really like, I, I, I want, I'm in this high school, I have my whole core group of friends here. Sure. And my, dad, you, you're really pulling me out of this. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, it, you can outreach, you know, use chaplains, uh, use uh, you know, other friends that, uh, you know, have, have their kids talk to, you know, your kids yeah. about, hey, this is the experience. Um, but you can't can't say it's not it's not rough on our, our military children yeah. and, and our families because uh, that there's so many resources out there, military one source. You know, you can go to the uh, all the things on, on an installation yeah. that have a bunch bunch of folks that can talk through and help, help uh, families with that. But uh, I think the key the key for us was the, the ability to communicate and have them understand when they got a little bit older. Okay, this is what dad's job is. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're going to be, this is how we're going to be. Uh, we're going to move a lot. Um, it, and it's not easy. Yeah. So I, I think it's hard. It's hard on, it's hard on a military member if the spouse does not go with them, if they stay in a location. Sure. Like if that's, that soldier goes off to be a geographical bachelor. Um, we made that decision a long time ago. Like, like I said, Cozy said she'd follow, follow me yeah. anywhere. So that's – our family was lucky. Um, is it a perfect world? No. But <laughs> I, I think open lines of communication, having other people, you know, help talk yeah. to the, the kids, you know, that way they, they kind of have a grasp. But then they have a support network. Yeah. And what's really cool is we all have cell phones now, so they can right. still keep in contact. They can do FaceTime or whatever yeah. whatever crazy apps they have now on the phone, but they can still keep in t- contact with other friends. But I think it's so cool for a military uh, child because uh, they, have, they have a network like we do because everywhere yeah. they go, they meet those those friends. And, and the, what's funny is the Army's small. <laughs> Usually we all come back together at a location. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. My daughter had her first friend move away this year she uh from daycare and oh my goodness Mm. it was it was heartbreaking like she went to daycare and she she ended up acting out and we ended up printing off a picture of her and her friend so that she could take with her back to daycare so she she felt like she had a little piece of her but you know she's going into kindergarten my son's in second grade and so it's it's just heartbreaking to think about but I also know that this is dad's been gone for weeks months months at a time and so that they are they're they're learning to be resilient i i use the word (laughs) i'd say tough they're they're tough (laughs) they are they really are and i I feel like we don't always give them enough credit but um their (laughs) mom needs to be tougher Mm. sometimes Mm. (laughs) um so we're gonna run out of time before i get to everything but what would sergeant major sims say to private sims um be physically fit know how to shoot your weapon um be motivated and uh always always try to be that person first um and then there's always a, a component of faith uh you, you have to, you know you join the army i mean do you believe in the army you know, do you believe in god or, or things like that um but i think you have to be fully committed to why you why you raise your right hand um but the I always, I'm guilty, you know, fitness, kind of like General Garrett, guilty. <laughs> the very important part of uh, being in, in the United States Army yeah. is being physically fit because you just never know on that day uh, when you're running across Samar, Iraq in full kit and it's 115 degrees uh, pulling somebody out of a burning vehicle. Um, you, you, that's so important. But then yeah. when you get that person out of that vehicle, you have to be, have the wherewithal to know 
to you know it's time to engage the enemy with with your uh, personal weapon uh yeah. so it's it always comes back to uh being physically fit number one and then being able to do whatever your job is but you're a soldier first so everybody needs to know how to shoot a weapon yeah uh, so that's it's kind of what sticks out to me about you know if I, if my son were to go in the army that's exactly what i'd tell him okay and so throughout your time here at Forcecom, you've talked a lot about leading soldiers um and what would you say is the most important aspect of leading soldiers um so yeah, you've heard general papas talk about it, engaged leadership you yeah. have to be down in the dirt and the weeds with with so as a leader with soldiers if it's raining out that's when you need to be more present yeah because uh, it it's important for them to see that hey th- this person actually gets on that they do the same thing that i do um but then that's when you can you get the vulnerable or really the person that's going to be willing to talk to you about hey we have this problem at camp poster station yeah. x and you know that's what's so amazing about the people in this building this staff is phenomenal and you can i can phone call i can send a, a note or an email and whoever i send it to they're going to start action in that problem right away to take care of, yeah. of our our subordinates and our, our soldiers and our, our it's, it's it's just amazing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to miss the most uh 100 percent going to miss the most is the people i think um that's what i thrive on um I, it's been like that my whole career uh it's going to be hard you know when i come out of position next friday on that following Monday, yeah, right? So, yeah, you know, I'm still going to go to the gym. I'll still do PT, but not not to be able to, you know, engage with the folks in this building or sure. go on a TDY trip and spend in time with soldiers. Yeah, um, that's that that's going to be the hardest thing. What are you and Cozy going to do? I'm going to play golf. <laughs> Somehow um, I knew that was coming. Yeah, so we're uh, you know it's really hadn't talked about it. It's it's kind of nerve wracking coming to the end of a career. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to do all the medical stuff. You know, I have my resume. I've been, I can't really reach out to people yet because I can't start working until I go on terminal leave. Sure. Um, you know, but you have to know, like, I've, we've had this steady income for 35 plus years. It's like, okay, what's next? You know, I'm going to have a retirement check and all that. But sure. It's like, I, I have to stay engaged because if I don't, I don't, I don't want to be uh, one of the statistics that you read. So still, still staying involved with the Army in some some aspects yeah. but still working you know to you know keep keep me motivated Absolutely. keep me moving forward uh, but we're gonna uh we're gonna move to clarksville tennessee um great uh support uh group there a base of folks that i yeah. met when i was division star major and then when we were there for six years prior to being a division star major a long time ago we still have a, we have a great group of friends that's a great area it's uh it i think uh once we get there, you know, it's it's the nerve wracking part still where you still gotta I still gotta clear. I sure. go, I go to CIF and <laughs> oh like boy. do all this great stuff, but um, I think uh, we'll we'll land we'll land pretty good. Yeah. With, with a great support network and then Fort Campbell's really close and I, I know a bunch of folks still there, so it, it'll it'll help. Especially when I'm missing soldiers, I could probably just throw on a set of army go PTs, PT. go run up and down the roads, <laughs> just that way I can still see it. Yeah. Well, I hope you you both take some time to enjoy retirement and relax. Um, but before I let you get out of here for the last time, is there anything else you want to just say or add? Uh, I think uh, the honor to, to serve as uh, the Force Comm Command Sergeant Major has is, is been I, – I, I, tell all the four star star majors that this is the best job to have because you know afc has to bar borrow our people uh, if you think about <laughs> you, you know, europe we're sending our force comm soldiers to europe to right. do that um tradoc they have to worry about too much stuff like uh, retention or not, uh, <laughs> accessions and all that stuff and drill sergeants i mean hands down i think uh, being able to serve as the force comm star major but really going out and doing all the traveling that I have done in the past three years and seeing the impacts of, uh, you know, when I, when I give a problem to this staff, how they can solve the problem. And when I go back and visit again, that problem that, that was, we were staring at in the face the first time I was there, the second, third time I go back, that problem's not there anymore. Yeah. So I think the, the power of like general Garrett used to say, using, using my rank for good. <laughs> Um, so I mean, it's amazing when you put, you know, like Pappas on a, on a CC line <laughs> and like the stuff that, or you know, his name in an yeah, email, the stuff that kind of <laughs> happens, but, um, it, just the ability to actually 
see the difference that uh, this this headquarters makes for uh, our cores and our divisions and our downtrace units. It's just it's just been the thrill of a lifetime. Well, I want to just thank you for always being willing to come on the podcast or do a video when I bombard you at AUSA. I appreciate your, I appreciate all of that. Um, I've I've really enjoyed getting to talk with you and get to know you a little bit more. Um, so I I'm I. I'm excited that you're retiring. I hope you you and Cozy enjoy it. Um, and thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Oh, thank you. Always a pleasure. <laughs>